Hi, Cindy, Crazy Old Sock Lady here, back for a, a first in installment of doing actually something, making fun, goody set of squishy socks, uh, or making squishy socks. Anyway, I'm excited, sorry, I had too much caffeine. Oh, hey, I wanted to give a shout out right up front. Mary McAnulty is the sponsor of this week's YouTube video. Um, she is a wonderful lady. She lives here locally. I've had the great pleasure of meeting her a couple of different times at Crank Inns, and I was really thrilled when she did this for us, so I'm really pleased. Today we're going to talk about how to make slipper socks, either on like an Addy or uh, a Stintro, but also on a bumblebee with sock weight. So we're going to talk about with sock weight and bulky weight. So the first thing we do is we'll start with the bulky weight and you can use the 40, the 44, the 46, or the 48, and it can accommodate from children's all the way up to men's. This is done on the 46 uh, with a bulky weight yarn in women's, and what I simply did was I um, put waist yarn on, cranked out 40 rows, put waist yarn on, and took it off the machine. On the bumblebee with the 90 slot cylinder, um, I did this uh, with uh, sock weight, with fingering weight yarn, and it's super simple. You cast on, you put your cast on, bonnet on, you put your ravel cord. There's a tip to this. Why I put the ravel cord here first is because I have this one on the outside. When you have something that has two waist yarns on it, you have to, you know, manage to get them both off, but you also want to get the sock off and not tear stuff up. So you can close these ends because we close the ends. And uh, so here's that quick tip before I tell you the uh, pattern for the other one. I take the tail that I put on the outside and I just start to pull. This is ravel cord. You could do this with a different color yarn, but only one row after you hang your bonnet until you can pull it out like so. Throw it off to the side. Ta-da, my cast on bonnet is now separate. So to do this on a bumblebee and if you used a river uh, like a, a half pitch you could probably do this also on a 60 or a 72 slot cylinder on a regular cylinder um, if you want to fool with that so the first thing I do is I crochet both ends closed of course and take the waist yarn off which I already did on this one but if you'll notice here's my tail I leave a really long tail but I actually start opposite of the end and start doing that because this is a single fiber construction and closing it up all the way through. So to make this on a bumblebee or somewhere else, um, you cast on, you put your cast on bonnet on, you put your waist yarn on, your, or your ravel cord, your waist yarn, crank out 80 rows and then put your waist yarn on, take it off the machine and you close up the end. So for simplicity, I'm going to show you how I start this. And you'll notice that I've got this right at the very end on this side, on this end here. It ends right here on the side seam. You want to do that as best you can, if humanly possible. Um, it's not always going to be perfect. Bring out all of your goodies out of the middle. And there is the end of my yarns right there. I simply fold it there. Sorry, people. And I just kind of roll it up and match it up to the other end. Now because I've already done this first end, it gets a little easier, but so if you were doing this and this was your first open end, this is what you do. But since I already have one that's done, I can take that row, see, and as long as I make this straight all the way to the end, then I know that I'm lining up with the other side. So this is the easy way to do this. So that's a little tip and trick. So when you have to do this and you've got something you need to close at both ends, voila. So now what I want to do is I want to see where I pinched it and see I've got two loops right here and here. They're facing each other. So what I want to do is I go through this first loop and the second loop and I pull the second loop through the first. And so then I alternate picking up the stitches from one side to the other, making sure I don't pick up waste yarn. 
all the way through to the other side. And once that's done, we'll, uh, I'll show you a quick way to close off the tail and blah, blah, blah. You want to make sure you get every stitch, because if you don't get every stitch, then you're going to end up with a run in your goodies. So we'll come back. Well, actually, we'll go ahead and do a few more just to show you. I gotta look and see. Okay, so here. I don't have real good lighting and I've got old lady eyes. So pull and then go to the other side. And no, you can't do that. And then go to the other side. And so you just alternate back and forth through all your stitches. Don't miss any because they'll drop if you do. And then when you get to the very end, you just pull your tail all the way through and it kind of ties that off. Don't cut it because everything we're going to do after this is going to be done with the tails that we started with. I leave long tails so that I have lots of room because there's lots of things to do. Okay, so here we are, we're at the, almost at the end. I'm gonna pull this stitch through this one, and then I'm gonna take this tail, and I'm gonna pull it through to kind of give it that lockdown. So yes, it's a really long tail, but that's okay. And then I just give it a cinch. Now this is off by a stitch or so. I don't know how I managed to do that, but it is. <coughs> but the end is, um, all closed up. It makes such a pretty, pretty, pretty end. And then we hide them, which is kind of sad. Okay, then you take your waist yarn off. And you have to. And this side always is a little funny to get going. There we go. I don't know why it does this. It just does. It drives me crazy. Let's see, we're back through some more. All right, so we'll come back after we get the waist yarn off. Okay, so here we are. We've got our waist yarn off. We've got our ends closed. And I wish I, I wish we had feel a vision because, because we didn't add any extra yarn here on the ends, we don't add any extra bulk. I want you guys to see what I just found. I knew I missed one. I couldn't find it. There it is. How are we going to fix that? We're just going to put this through. So... Even if you do this in the middle, you can still kind of fix it, but uh, so we're going to pull this through and we won't lose that stitch because this is all going to get closed in just shortly anyway, so that will never even be noticeable. Now, <coughs> what we do is we basically are going to do some stuff, but I wanted to share with you this same basic premise, and you could probably do like 70 rows, but you could do fingerless gloves, and then you could do like do a uh, mattress stitch up like 35 rows and then do another mattress stitch like down 15 rows and you would have a fingerless glove that would fit just beautifully and come probably right to here but that's not what we're going to do today but the process is basically the same so the first thing I want to do is and you guys will laugh at me is I'm going to base stitch if you will um, what's going to be the toe uh, and before I make that decision, I'm going to look at the other one. And they're about the same spot. So, yeah, we'll have blue toe, blue and tan toe, just like the other one. So, put the yarn in. And when I do this, I have found that about every third or fourth stitch. And so what I actually do here is I go, so there's one, two, three. And I actually go into that weaving we did that uh, you know kind of that crocheting off and then just do it again one two three so three or four all the way across works really nicely you notice I'm not pulling I'm not cinching it yet I don't want to cinch it because uh, one two three and you get to where you just kind of feel your way through it and so and uh, you could do four one two three four 
that works too. I think I did four on the other one. So three or four here and three or four there. You end up with a odd number at the end. But yeah, we just keep going back and forth. Like I said, I don't pull this through tight. And I found a neat little trick that uh, I like really well um, for this because the heel looks better if you stitch it on the outside and then turn the sock around. So what we're gonna do first is just kind of set this. We're not gonna pull it snug yet. And we're not gonna cinch this up until after we close the heel and turn the sock. What's going to be inside right. So technically right now we're working it on the flat side, but uh, when we work the heel, we'll be working, um, we'll work it on the inside of the sock and then turn it around and then we'll cinch the toe. Um, so, but I just want to get this in here because uh, it actually goes pretty quick. I could be doing less and more space oopsie. And I try just to stay in across these stitches here because there's no bulk there. And if I put it below those, I get bulk. So I only want to pick up those two little Vs. See, I get in there. I don't want to have anything else in there. Otherwise, it gets bulky in the toe. Because it is a cinch toe, you don't want to, you know, less bulk in there, the better off. And this doesn't have to be pretty, and it doesn't have to be perfect, because when you cinch it, it's going to hide. So we're going to cinch this like it's a hat, like at the top of a hat, you know. So it's, it's easy peasy. And it goes quick. I've had so much fun lately. I saw what started this video and because the girls on the Addy page want this is too so I'll tell them when it's up because it's the same process um, there's a girl her name is Jojo Juju and I love her she has a, a Facebook group um, for the Addies and and the Centros and things like that um, they're the CSMs but they're the the ones for the heavier gauge uh, yarn you know worsted weight bulky weight you can do other things on them but it gets a little too lacy looking for my flavor, but that's just me. But anyway, Jojo had a video and I watched it and I was like, well, how come I can't do that in a single piece? Well, I didn't know she had a video, so um, I did it. But I also figured out in the process how to do a one piece construction where it's all just one single piece of fiber. And that's what this is. So now we've kind of got that base. I want to meet my ends. And, uh, this needle right here, by the way, I know I've shown this before, is is actually a flatbed knitter's needle. Um, it puts stuff on and off, I think, is what it's for. But it's double-ended. I like it. It's got a nice rounded tip.